Hey everybody, Ron here with Southwest Colorado Adventures. If you notice, there's actually some ground underneath all this white stuff that hasn't gone away yet. So the sun's been out two days in a row. Pretty darn exciting. What we're gonna do today is gonna be super simple. So this was actually another subscriber uh, suggestion, which is how the heck do you mount your bike up to carry it over to Utah and all the other places that I go whenever I <laughs> can't ride because there's snow over here, for example. So anyway, we're gonna walk through it. It's super simple. This should be short and sweet. I've actually got somebody helping me out with the camera work, so it'll be even that much better. So the first thing we're gonna do is get the bike up there. Now, if you notice, this trailer has a ramp. This is an adventure bike. My first adventure of the day is gonna be, I'm gonna ride it up. I think you're not supposed to, but if I can't ride up this little ramp, then I definitely can't ride up over there. Now, I will say, if you don't have this big fancy wide tailgate and you're just using a ramp that's only about yay big, you probably want to walk it up because you don't want to get stuck in the middle. Even on this, you don't want a high center. So you want to make sure that your angle is correct so that you're going to be able to clear all the way up. Because if you get stuck in the middle, your feet probably won't touch and you will tip over and you don't want to break anything on yourself or your bike. So, but this, I've done it several times no big deal. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. So the first thing you'll notice is that I have a wheel chalk up front that I bought from Amazon. I think it was actually a two pack. I think I can find a link for that. So I'll throw it down in the bottom so you know which one I got. Pretty sure it was the budget model back when I got it. Anyway, so once you get up here, obviously turn everything off i prefer actually to leave it in gear whenever i'm doing this because that's just one less thing that's gonna be moving around if it's in gear and first we're gonna put the kickstand down and we're gonna hop off if you do get a chalk and you're only gonna mount one it makes sense to put it in the middle of the trailer the time that i got these chocks we had my xr 650 and then my wife also had a little Kawasaki, so we had two. So I've got mounts on both sides, but it works fine either way. Now there's a couple of things to think about whenever you're putting this up here. So, and, and if you've researched this on the internet, there's about a hundred different suggestions on how to do this. I always kind of pretty much go through them and pick the one in the middle. So what I've been doing, a lot of people will say, uh, you know, connect them to your handlebars and straight down and forward. Um, and what that does is it compresses your uh, suspension down. Now, keep in mind, whenever you're artificially compressing the suspension, you don't wanna compress it too much. You don't want it to be overly compressed because that's not good for the seals. They're not meant to be fully compressed for a long period of time. They're meant to hit a bump go down, go up, and then they're off and riding down the road. So sag on these bikes generally is around 30 to 35% on any kind of adventure touring motorcycle. So it just depends on the riding application that you're doing, but basically between 30 and 35. So if you do choose to go from bars down to your trailer to mount, then I would recommend not really compressing it much further than that. Now the challenge is, if you hit a big bump and it does compress, what's gonna happen with the line that you tightened up to 35%? It's gonna go slack. So that's not actually the way I do it. The way I do it is right here above on the fork, this is where I compress. So this is below the compression and you just grabbing the wheel and then pulling it forward on both sides. And that's how I mount this and I've taken big 700 pound Harleys and I've taken lighter weight dirt bikes and I've taken this bike and I haven't ever, ever had an issue. This is a for what it's worth. You do it however you feel the most comfortable with. I will tell you that I did make sure that my insurance covers trailering motorcycles every time I drive because you just never know what you're gonna run into, literally. So anyway, we're gonna get started. I've got straps here 
they are not super organized. I basically have one strap for each side and then one strap for the back because once you have the front in position, you don't really need a lot on the back. So these straps I picked up at Walmart. They are 1,100 pounds per strap. Um, obviously this bike weighs about 450, um, right in that range. Um, so it's plenty to take care of it. And like I said, I use these for my Harley and no issues. And they're not super expensive, but they've got the heavy duty hooks on both sides. Got straps everywhere. So this first place that I'm gonna strap to is this little, well, <laughs> it's a tie down built into the trailer. Most trailers have that at some point. If they don't have that, then whenever you buy your chocks, then you can actually buy some that will go through the floor that you can mount down to as well. The excess out of the way, clip those two together. That way, this is what we're strapping down. Now, I am not even remotely gonna tighten this side down. This is just the most visible. What you always wanna start with the side opposite of the kickstand. So over on the right side of the motorcycle, because what you wanna do is put that in first, and that is what's gonna bring this up perpendicular to the trailer. Once you've got that, then you come over to this other side. Now, don't over tighten it because if you pull it too far over that direction, guess what? There's no kickstand, so it's gonna fall over. <laughs> so lift it up pretty darn close, get this one snugged up, and then cinch that one down a little bit back and forth so that you maintain that perpendicular position on the motorcycle. It makes sense, right? Hopefully. All right, so this side I don't have a tie down. I have one, but it's like way over there and that's a little bit more off to the side. I'd prefer to have a little bit more forward. So I just use this part of the trailer right here to tie this side down, pull that back so that I'm cinching up here. And then we start tying it down. Now this is gonna pull the bike forward and to the opposite side of where the, uh, kickstand is. All right, so before we cinch this up on this side, make sure that you, if you do it this way, feel free, do it however you want. If you do it this way, make sure that you don't get the speedometer cable inside your strap. That won't work. It will break the speedometer cable. So now we're going to strap this down and start pulling it over this direction, pulling the weight off of the kickstand and getting it off this direction. Okay, it's getting pretty close to upright. So before I continue to cinch any further on that side, I'm gonna snug this up over here. Not even snug actually, just to where the lines are not sagging. Because this way I know if I pull it this direction, I've got that counterbalance on the other side. All right, that's pretty much it for the front part right here. Um, if you notice, I mean, I, some of the roads when I went on my Utah rides are so bad. I literally thought the trailer was either gonna go off the road or I'd look back and the bike was gonna be bucking up and down, but none of that happened. So this, has actually been tried on the dirt roads around here getting out and then also on just crazy pavement going 60 miles an hour. Probably should go slower, but you know, limited time and all. So anyway, that is pretty darn tight right there. So now we're gonna move to the back of the trailer, even though you don't want this to fly around. I generally just kind of scooch it over a little bit to make it, you know, straight because it looks prettier like that. A lot of videos will say that you want to strap from somewhere on the frame here down over there. And yes, you can do that. Absolutely. Um, that's just not what I do. This, bring it through the wheel so that it's basically level with where the strap is. 
And then I get my ratchet and attach it there. So here's the ratchet. Kind of try to cinch it up as much as you can with this other side. So that is tight. There it's not as tight. So again, what I do is I pull this over. That way it tightens up that side, gives us a little bit more slack here. And then I can cinch it down a little further. Then, just a matter of tying this stuff up so it's not flapping in the breeze real bad. Nothing special there. Up front here, I do the same thing. Let's get both sets of straps. And then kind of tie them. Usually I just tie them around here. Tighten that one down. Put it through one more time, leave a loop, and then tighten that down. That way when you're driving down the road, it doesn't just, it's not flapping all over the place. Other than that, don't forget to put your ramp up if you've got one. You won't forget very long if you do. I have done that. All right, so the question is, is this going to ride? Well, this is pretty darn sturdy. Does it move around back here? Well, it all moves a little bit, but it's not going to come off. Those straps are going to hold it. And if you want, after you drive a couple of miles, pull off and just make sure everything's still snug. No big deal. Those uh, wheel chocks are, haven't had any issues with them. Like I said, I've had super heavy bikes on them. And then I've had this on them through some crazy um, pavement driving and everything's worked great. Anyway, that's pretty much all I've got today. Thank you to my camera lady, director, producer. And if anybody has any questions, feel free and put them in the comment section. I do respond to everything. And I look forward to the rest of this stuff drying out so that we can actually get up and ride. Thanks again. Everybody be safe out there. We'll talk to you soon. So just finished up filming how to get this bike on the trailer, how to get it strapped down and everything. One last thought, reverse the order whenever you take it off. Make sure you don't unstrap the left side where the kickstand is of the motorcycle before you do the right side because you want it to land on the kickstand as the tension comes off of the straps and you don't want to dump it on the right hand side. So just a quick tip. Thanks.